In 1865, the United States was engulfed in the final stages of the Civil War. On April 9th, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to the Union General Ulysses S. Grant at the Apotomox Courthouse in Virginia, effectively ending the war and the antebellum South. Just days later, on April 14th, President Abraham Lincoln was ended at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., Vice President Andrew Johnson was sworn in as his successor. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, Europe was undergoing significant political and social changes. In February of that year, the International Working Men's Association was founded in London, marking the beginning of organized socialist movements in Europe. In July, the final major battle of the Astro-Prussian War took place, resulting in a Prussian victory and leading to the unification of Germany the following year. In August, the Geneva Convention was signed, establishing the modern laws of war and the treatment of prisoners and wounded soldiers. And in November of that year, the British Parliament passed the Second Reform Act, granting the right to vote to male householders in urban areas. Overall, 1865 was a year of significant historical events on both sides of the Atlantic, with major changes taking place in the aftermath of the Civil War and in the fight for social and political rights. I'm very excited that we get to make this beautiful shawl from 1865. It's, I think it's going to be a significant piece to make as it is it is a very common shawl. It is timeless, though. Timeless, Victorian, common elegance. It's simple. It's practical. It's perfect for frigid months. And I'm very excited to make it. It's not too complicated. It's a way for us to dip our toes into antique patterns um, you know, without it being too overtly complicated. The overtly complicated ones will come. I assure you that I have plenty. Uh, so let's dig our teeth into this beautiful Victorian era, 1865 shawl. So I'm going to show you how to make this antique shawl. It is a square shawl that you fold. It is a offset fold, so you wear it doubled up so that you get this sort of double look here. Essentially, we're going to make a small square blanket that will be folded into a offset triangle that is wearable. Pardon my dog. So that is what this is. Um, the pattern calls for a zephyr yarn. Now, I did some snooping, some Googling, some looking. I came upon, uh, what is it called? Goodies Ladies Books from about the 1810s. I don't know when they ended their publication, but every month a new magazine or book would come out, and within it would be multitudes of patterns, explanations of patterns, and new yarns to try out. I was able to learn that Zephyr is... A few things. It's a texture of a specific type of yarn. Its weight is commonly uh, like a fingering weight or fingerling weight. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. I think it's fingering. And there's also a woolen zephyr black yarn. And the woolen is thicker. It's more like a Aran weight. And if you look at this closely, look at her shoulder, you can see this the loose stitching. So... This definitely appears to me to be a woolen zephyr yarn. Okay, so I had no idea how much, <clears throat> how many yards of the yarn we're going to need for this here at the beginning of the video when you're watching this. I'm now done making the shawl, and the only way I could know what the yardage was that's needed was to finish the shawl because they don't tell you how much yarn, they just tell you what kind of yarn. So I determined that you will need 1,988 yards. That's without fringe. I have not put the fringe on yet, but what I, I bought five of these, right? I used four to make the, the main body of the shawl. This is my main color. 
I have this much left over out of all four. This is what I have left over, okay? This is what I'm gonna use for fringe. So I don't know how much you'll need for fringe, but I know that if you're gonna go with this yarn, you'll need five of these. Um, so this is 1,988 yards without fringe. These are 397 yards, or you can just, you know, use whatever brand you're gonna get, just get an extra bowl. And then you'll need 380 yards of an accent color and that's it. That's what you will need. That is the, that's the numbers. Here's what I have left over from my accent color. So it used almost an entire skein for the accent color. So there you go. Then they want you to use a wooden crochet needle, of course, meaning hook, that is an inch and a quarter in circumference. So I measured a few of my hooks and this one was the winner, a 10 millimeter or N slash P crochet hook. This is exactly one and a quarter inches in circumference. Now with this pattern, this pattern is so, this is the vaguest pattern I've ever, ever encountered in my entire life, in my entire crochet life. I, like I said, this, this pattern tormented me for 24 hours. I just needed to, to figure it out. Well, I got it figured out. So we're gonna work on it together. I highly recommend that for this, you get yourself some type of a stitch marker. You're going to need it as the stitches, the corners just disappear without them. You absolutely will not know where your next corner is without a stitch marker. Okay, so let's get right into this. Okay, so I, I genuinely don't wanna take this apart just cause how long it took me to figure it out, but I, I did write it down in more modern terminology for myself and for you guys. Um, what we're about to do can be easily achieved with more modern techniques, but we want to work the antique pattern as it was intended to be worked. That's the fun of it. So you can see the center of our work is actually right here. I'm telling you, this thing, it needs to be a square, but this is the center of it here, even though it is a square with even numbers of stitches all the way around. It's crazy, it's Looney Tunes, but <laughs> but we're, we're going to, I'm gonna unravel this. I'm just, I'm, I'm delaying because I really don't wanna unravel this. It took me so many hours to figure it out. Okay, here we go. And like I said before, you'll want four stitch markers and you'll certainly want to keep track of your rows. It's going to be very important. So if you don't have a row counter, just get a pen and uh, paper and write down one, two, three, every row that you've worked. Okay, here we go. The pattern, the pattern itself says to make a foundation of four stitches. Then it says to take a vein of the third, second, and first of these on the needle or hook and work them off together. This thoroughly threw me for a loop when I first tried it out the first 74 times. 75th time I got it. <laughs> I had to get a piece of paper to put it so you can see this dark yarn easier. Here we go. One, two, three, four chains. Now, we are going to be working in like traditionally, because typically, as you guys know, I like to work in the back loops in the back bumps, but we're going to be working with the V-stitch facing us. And in the third, second, and for, uh, first vein, as they worded it, these top loops here, we're going to insert the yarn and stop. Insert the yarn into the next one and stop. And one more time into this last loop, insert your yarn. Now yarn over and pull through all of them, but you'll have to really try to get through them. They don't, it, it's not gonna wanna just come right on through very easily. There we go. Now what we are left with is one stitch right in the middle. Here is the top of the stitch we just made. Let me get my hook out of the way here. Here is the top of the stitch that we just made right here. Here is the side of it, and you can see 
that we have got all these loops on the side, these bars on the side. So that is what we are working with so far. Now you will turn your work this way. We're not flipping at all. We are, here is the top of our stitch. Turn your work this way. Now the bottom of your foundation chain is at the top. Go ahead and reinsert your hook. And it says to round, first round, always two single crochet. Always means this is the way you're gonna work it from the first stitch to the end of the row. So always two single crochet on the free vein of each foundation stitch. That's why we rotate it to where the, the bottom of our foundation stitch is now on the top and we have those free remaining veins that we didn't work into ready to be worked into. So we're not going to chain again and into the very first loop or vein as they call it. There we go. Let's get into the loop. Yarn over, pull through just one loop. Cause it's gonna, it, because we didn't chain, it's gonna wanna do a slip stitch. Then you can work your single crochet and work one more single crochet into that same stitch. That's two. Into the next loop over, we work two single crochet, one and two. Into the third loop over, we work two single crochet, one, and two. Now the problem that I run into is that this leaves us with seven stitches. In order to make this a square, we really need eight. So in this last stitch that we worked into, we're just gonna add one more single crochet. This is where I, I found it is the only way to make it work. Okay, now let me look at my handwritten instructions all three together. Okay, now get ready to use your stitch markers because we have our eight single crochet. In the very, very first stitch, you can see we're just gonna close this round up. This entire pattern is going to be worked in a continuous square, by the way. I'll tell you though, I'll explain later on how you can tell the difference between one round, like your last round from your new round. All right, the very first stitch we see right here, we just worked our eighth single crochet. Now the very first stitch, we're going to work our first corner. So one single crochet, chain one, grab a stitch marker and wrap it around that chain one. See how I'm just loosey goosey wrapping it around the chain one. It's important to do that, trust me. Then make your single crochet into the same stitch to complete your corner. Now the reason you wanna do that before you complete your corner, can you tell me which is the chain one and which is our single crochet stitch. There's no way on earth, but this is actually your chain one right here, even though it looks like a stitch, doesn't it? So that's why it's important to do it this way. Next stitch over gets one single crochet, creating a wall of the square with that. Now the next stitch over is our corner and it gets one single crochet, chain one, stitch marker around the chain one, See, I'm just working, putting it around the chain one. Then into the same stitch, right here, we work our last single crochet to complete that corner. Next stitch over is a single crochet. Next stitch after that is another corner. Single crochet, chain one, stitch marker, into the same stitch, one more single crochet. Next stitch over gets a single crochet. Next stitch over gets a corner. One single crochet, chain one, stitch marker into the same stitch, single crochet. Each round we're gonna be adding two stitches to each square side. Here we have our corner, thank goodness for the stitch marker, or we wouldn't know what is a corner and what isn't. Okay, 
into the, I just keep the stitch marker in, I move it aside a little bit into that chain one space. We work a corner, chain one, or single crochet, chain one, move that stitch marker up. Of course, as the shawl gets bigger, we won't have to fiddle with the stitch markers as frequently. Into that same stitch right there, we work one more single crochet to complete the corner. Now you can see that I have three stitches in front of me. So we added two stitches. Remember the first go around, we only worked one stitch right in the middle between the two corners. Now we have two additional stitches to work between the corners. So here we go. One, two, and three. There is my corner. One single crochet, chain one, move the stitch marker up. Yeah, these are a bit of a pain in the butt, but they are vital, vital. Into that same stitch, one more single crochet, and I've got three stitches in front of me. One, two, three. That is because we added these two on the end right here on our first go around. So one, two, and three. That means that the next go around we have, we're going to have five stitches between the corners. And then the next one after that, we'll have seven stitches between the corners. And I lied, I, we, are on, we are on round three. Okay, aren't we? First round, yes, we are in round three, I'm sorry. Here we go, make our corner, single crochet, chain one, move the stitch marker up, into the same stitch, complete the corner. Now we have three stitches to work. One, two, and three. Make our corner. One, chain one, stitch marker into the same stitch. One more single crochet. I've got three stitches, three stitches to work. So this is my last round of the square. One, two, and three. Work a corner. One, chain one, into the same stitch, one more single crochet. Now we have, move this out of the way because this is a stitch. What's in your corner right here, you have to move your um, last single crochet out of the way a little bit to expose that first stitch. One, two, three, four, five, because we added two onto the three. So the next round up will be seven then seven, eight, nine, then nine, 10, 11, okay? That's how that's gonna work. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. We are on round four. And so there you go. You can see how that is our square. And it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's going to make basically a small blanket that is meant to be worn as a shawl. So when you have completed 50 rounds of this stitch pattern, which should go by really quick, um, come on back and we will start working on the color change section down here. Okay? I hope that that was, I hope I explained that right. I'm afraid I didn't, but maybe I did. Okay, I'll see you guys at row 50. Hello there. Okay, just popping on real quick. It's You'll notice the video is nice and dark and ambient lighting. I'm filming in the evening. It's so quiet and calm and everybody has left me the hell alone. Anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to show you that by the end of the video, you're going to notice, or by the time we get to the lower 
striping, you're going to notice that there is a different color on here. There is a reason. This blue yarn, the navy uh, color in um, the Walmart brand, the Mainstays Basic Yarn, they don't carry navy anymore. I've had this for about two years. And I've had this one for like, I bought it like three Halloweens ago, the Burgundy. This is the brand. They don't carry the Burgundy anymore either, guys. So I did not want to undo, as you can see. Let me pan you out. Oh, you are panned out. Okay, well, look at how much work I did before I ran out of blue. Look at this. I was like 30 rows in. Now I'm at 36. So <laughs> my husband calls me from Walmart and he says, they don't have any navy. They have pink, purple, yellow, red, white, black, and then some variegated colors. And so I said, okay, well, how about this? Get me a few of the gray. I already have white. So I'm going to finish this off with the gray and then I'm going to use white for striping instead of burgundy because I was going to get more burgundy as well because I would not have enough. This would not be enough to do the burgundy or the striping. So I am going to finish in gray and do the striping in white and do the fringe in gray. <laughs> but I just wanted to pop on to let you guys know. Also, I wanted to let you know or just if you are unaware, don't, don't skip over this yarn. Don't, I mean, the color selection is very, very basic, right? I mean, very basic, but you're going to get nearly 400 yards. This is $3, by the way, this is $3, this cane, 400 yards, nearly 400 yards, seven ounces. Yes. A, um, carrot, no, um, Red Heart Super Saver, their standard skeins are also seven ounce, but you don't get as many. You get like 364 yards. This is so much more lightweight. Um, it feels and it works up just like a Red Heart Super Saver, but it is more lightweight and it's $3. And in this economy with, you know, the way things are going, $3 yarn for basic colors, black, white, purple, uh, pink, gray, red. I don't, I don't remember what all I listed, but then there was two variegated. One was a blue variegated and one was a pink and purple variegated. But, um, yeah, so that's an update on where I'm at. I'm on row 36. I'm halfway done with row 36, about to start row 37. And this is coming right along. I actually really like doing a square in single crochet. Never done a square in single crochet before. Ain't that something? Okay, guys, I'll see you whenever I get uh, down to my 55th row. Okay, I just completed row 50. I'm ready to start row 51. So let's look at the pattern. And there is our row three to 50. We did all of that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, now follow five rounds uh, worked in a similar manner with gray worsted. Then three similar rounds with black and three more with gray. And finally, three rounds with black. Whew, it's going to be a pretty big one, isn't it? And then at the end here, it talks about the fringe, you know, into each stitch on the outer, on the outer edge fasten strands of black worsted 12 inches long I'm gonna do uh, 10 uh, two threads thick I'm just gonna do 120 inch strand folded in half and laid double so that's what I'm gonna do so now we are working on this they want us to do five rounds of this uh, gray and then three rounds in black and then three rounds in gray and three rounds in black. So we're gonna do five, three, three, and three. Okay, that's five of the gray, then three black, three gray, three black. So that's the instructions for the rest of the shawl. So I will check in. Um, I'll probably check in whenever I'm starting my second 
go around on the gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the five rounds of gray and then the three rounds of black and then I'll check in with you guys whenever I'm ready to start the three rounds of gray down here at the bottom. All right, almost done. Let me show you how I'm gonna actually switch up my colors. I haven't worked my last stitch yet because my last stitch is the stitch I wanna change colors with. So this is my second to last stitch here. Here is my corner, here is my last stitch. Go ahead and start my last stitch, but I'm gonna finish it with the white and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the gray off completely. I'm gonna leave a nice long enough tail to weave in and hide. There we go, tug on that gray just a little bit. On the white, now I will start my first corner, my first stitch of round 51. There we go. Move my stitch marker. There we go. And moving right along, remember to always pull this last stitch you just made to the side a little bit to expose that first stitch right there. It likes to hide if it can. And we're off. Okay, five rounds of white. So that'll bring me up to round 56. And then I'm gonna follow that up with three rounds of black three rounds of white, and finally three rounds of black. But like I said, I'll be back. I know I said the color gray. That's because I was reading off the pattern. I will be back in to check in with you guys after I have worked my five rounds of white and three rounds of black, and I'm ready to start my three rounds of white. All right, see you then. Okay, I'm now at row, or I've just finished row 58. So I started with row 51. Row 51 was my first white row. So 51, 52, 53, 54, and my last white row was 55. Then 56, 57, and 58. Now I'm ready to start my last row of white. Just like I did before. This is my last stitch before my corner start that last stitch, but complete it with my new color. There we go. Give this a tug, tighten things down a bit. Then immediately go into my corner, which is technically your first stitch of your new round. I meant to drop that tail. <laughs> there we go. Then chain one. Now I will work, we will work three rows of the white and then finally three rows of the gray. Or according to the pattern, we'll work three rows of gray, white, and three rows of black. When I am done with working those final rows, I'll come back and we will start the fringe and then we will see how the final piece looks. Very, very excited to get this one done. As a shawl, I'll likely not use it very often just because that's not part of modern fashion. But as a blanket, oh, you betcha. And maybe even as kind of a blanket shawl just to sit on the couch with when I don't want to run the gas for the heat because it is obnoxiously high right now for everyone, I'm sure. So yeah, this will make a really great blanket with fringe all around. That's going to be neat. Okay, guys, I will be back. And for you, just a second. For me, probably another hour <laughs> or or longer. <laughs> Just coming up to my last stitch before we can start the fringe. I just wanted to show you how I was gonna end it as the pattern does not have any instructions as to how to end this. So what I'm gonna do is 
work my last two single crochet before the corner and then in the corner instead of working a single crochet I'm just going to work one slip stitch just like that and that's going to be it and then we'll go ahead and start the fringe and actually I'm going to make this one of my first pieces of fringe here I decided that I don't want to do the fringe as long as the pattern says. Of course, you can do anything you want. Um, but I feel like that's going to be pretty long. Okay. They said, let me get the pattern. Okay, so they said, um, into each stitch on the outer edge, fashion, fat, Fasten, fa why can't I say that? Fasten strands of black worsted 12 inches long, two threads thick. Well, 12 inches long. Oh, good Lord, that's a whole foot. That's a whole foot. That's long. I decided I'm going to do <clears throat> 14 inch long pieces, but fold it in half. There we go. And folded in half is going to give us seven inch long strands right here. Boom to boom. And I feel like that is a lot better. <laughs> and if you look at the picture, it really doesn't look like foot long strands. It really, really doesn't. So. That's what I'm going to choose to do. Now, we all are familiar with my book, aren't we? Well, I just had an oh, duh moment. I'm pretty sure they mean to get a 12-inch long piece of string, fold it in half, and then make your fringe so that your fringe is actually six inches long. And that looks like it's about six inches long. I am such a simple idiot sometimes. <laughs> And you guys are probably watching this going, girl, no, that's not what they mean. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I figured it out. So I guess my, my fringe is actually going to be a little bit longer than the, uh, than the pattern calls for. Sorry. But I'm going to go around this way. This is 14 inches all the way around, folded in half, will be the seven inches that I want. See here, going around this way, yep, twisted, and I'm at 14 inches right here. So that's going to work out just fine for me. So here we go. You'll just put a piece of the yarn in the book and start wrapping. Just like this, as many times as you want. And when you get an, enough cut, which, I mean, I would go a lot more, but just for the sake of not driving you guys crazy doing this, then you just cut, and that's it. Of course, you'll take your starting strand, match it up with, well, not with the longest dang one. You'll take your starting strand, which is always going to be too long because a portion of it was in the book. And you'll just cut it to match. There we go. Now what we'll do is in each and every single stitch around, I'm gonna count that up for you too here in just a second. <laughs> this is the kind of thing I like to do mindlessly just while watching TV. Last time I did this was for my denim poncho on my other channel, and I was watch. I I must have watched about five episodes of Golden Girls before I got done. But that was fine. <laughs> Had a good time. So there we go. 
Okay, I'm gonna count these stitches up on one side and then multiply them and give you guys a stitch count just for fun. <laughs> okay, so I counted one edge. There are exactly 125 stitches on all four edges, equaling 500 stitches all the way around. So I will need 500 pieces of fringe. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put my fringe on and likely I will pick up finishing this uh, finish filming this tomorrow when I show you the reveal because after putting 500 pieces of fringe on today I don't know that I'm gonna be in the mood to jump on camera <laughs> I'm probably gonna be in the mood to just go take a hot soak and forget about everything around me for a little bit then I will enjoy this I'll see you guys then before the reveal let me go ahead and read you the pattern in full because I realized I haven't done that yet and you're really gonna get a kick out of the wording. Okay. This shawl is worked with black zephyr worsted and a wooden crochet needle in an inch and a quarter in circumference in single crochet and is bordered on the outer edges with stripes which are worked alternately with gray and with black zephyr worsted. The shawl is worked, excuse me, from the center, always going forward and widening on the corners. Make a foundation of four stitches. Take a vein of the third, second, and first of these on the needle and work them off together. First round, always two single crochet on the free vein of each foundation stitch second round always alternately for a widening on the next corner work two single crochet on the next stitch in the pre I'm sorry on the next stitch in the preceding round then one single crochet on the following stitch third through 50th rounds like the preceding round but the number of stitches between the two widenings is increased in every following round by one stitch in doing this always alternately in one round work two stitch on the first of the widening stitch and in the following round work two stitches on the second widening stitch then follow five rounds worked in a similar matter with gray worsted three similar rounds with black and three with gray worsted and finally two rounds oh I worked three on the end finally two rounds with black worsted I worked three I thought that was a three but the the phone is actually magnifying this so much clearer now okay uh, into each stitch okay black worsted into each stitch on the outer edge fasten strands of black worsted 12 inches long two threads thick and laid double and that's it if your eyes are cross welcome to the party <laughs> it took me a whole day to figure out what this all meant I just yeah okay here is the finished shawl <laughs>